a video review of the Homewood Suites by Hilton Las Vegas City Center Hotel. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video is part of my series on Las Vegas, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the common areas of the hotel, the neighborhood around the hotel, the inside of one of the rooms, this room, a single king bedroom, and I'll conclude with a review of the hotel. Without further ado, let me show you around. This Homewood Suites is a six-story hotel at the foot of the city center complex. Well, the city center complex that's across the Interstate 15 from the actual city center complex. That's the actual city center complex. The Las Vegas Strip is just on the other side of it. And so you go across the freeway and you'll find the Homewood Suites. It has a big parking garage that I'm standing on top of right now with ample self-parking. There's a swimming pool right here. It's a small swimming pool. And the Homewood Suites shares the complex with a Hilton Garden Inn, which it shares the parking garage and swimming pool with. Right in front of the hotel, you'll find a small circular driveway. If you're driving, you'll have to park here and go inside the check-in so that you can use your key card to then get into the parking garage. In front of the hotel, there's a lot of chairs and benches out here. Great on a warm day to enjoy some sun or get out here to have breakfast in the morning if the inside is too crowded. There's even a couple of barbecues out here that I did not see being used during my stay. Heading inside the hotel, just to the left of the entrance, is the breakfast area. It's a pretty big breakfast area, and I always found the seat when I came down. On the ground floor, there's a small but clean, bright, and fresh fitness center. There were clean towels hanging on all of the machines, and it had windows that looked out on that main circular driveway on the front. Next to the gym, there's a laundry room with three washers and four dryers, two bucks each. One thing I'd like to see, each guest room floor had an ice machine. Sometimes these extended stay hotels do ice in the refrigerators and those never taste good. And last but not least, on the ground floor, there is one meeting room available for rental. Now that we've seen around the hotel, let me show you the inside of one of the rooms. This is room 618, a single king bedroom on the sixth floor. First thing we'll take a look at right there is the single king bed. Topher is relaxing on that bed, nice and comfy. I will point out there's a ceiling fan right above the bed to keep you cool. There's a flat panel television right here to the left side of the bed. Just beyond the bed, there's a bathroom. We'll check that out in a second. That's the front door that I walked in through with all my stuff. There's a little desk here that's in the middle of the room, facing into the room. And then there's a kitchenette back here that has a dishwasher, sink, microwave, two electric burners on the stove top. Though I will point out there are no pots and pans in the room. There's just plates and um, utensils down here. I assume to get a pot and pan, you probably have to ask for it from the front desk. Now, Chris, where's the refrigerator? Well, just beyond that kitchenette, there's the refrigerator right there. Full refrigerator and freezer. Looking back into the room this way from the kitchenette, there's that desk again, and there's a big three seat sofa, a little ottoman in the middle. My room, looking out this window, looks out at Looking out my window in the daytime so you can see better, directly across from me is a parking garage of the nearby condominium complex. You can see the strip hotels back there, the Bellagio, the city center, Aria's the closest one, and you can see the I-15 freeway not far away. Turning back into the room from that window, let's take a look at the bathroom. In the bathroom, there's the sink right here. There's an illuminated mirror. We're gonna come back to the uh, bathtub. But right here is the closet. And this is kind of weird because it's a really small opening and these doors are kind of big. So that's as big as you can open up the closet. It doesn't matter which set of these doors you move, but it only opens up a little bit. So hopefully you don't have anything big to put in the closet and now into the bathroom there's a toilet right there there's some towels hanging up on the wall and uh, this room has a walk-in shower um, with just a fixed shower head up on top Okay, Topher, now that we've seen everything around the hotel, do you know what time it is? It's time to do our Topher review. And for those of you who watch our reviews regularly, you'll know we rate things on a scale of one to five Tophers. And so how many Tophers is this hotel going to get? It is going to get three Tophers. All right, so now let's talk about the pros and the cons of why this hotel got 
three Tophers. And by the way, three Tophers is not an awful rating. I'd say that's pretty average. It's a pretty good rating. Uh, we're a pretty hard rater, so first we'll start with pros. It's a pretty new hotel. It's a clean hotel. The staff was very nice. Um, parking was easy, and uh, the room, the room was pretty comfortable. It's a good size room, and sleeping was, uh, sleeping was okay. We'll talk more about the con section. So uh, the other pros, because it's not a big casino hotel, it's a fairly small hotel. It's easy to get in, it's easy to get out. That's my favorite thing about this hotel. I came here with a car, and so I could just come in, I could park my car really quick to go from the parking garage, really quick to check in, really quick to get to my room, and then really quick to check out. And I, I'm, I assume it will be, I've never seen long lines for checkout, Unlike a lot of the big strip hotels, you end up schlepping your luggage through huge casinos, you stand in long lines, and that just makes Chris and Topher very sad. So we like, uh, we like this much smaller hotel experience. We like no casino, and we like that it was not smoky at all. The air in the hotel felt very fresh. Okay, now let's talk about the cons. The location right next to the freeway. This is just really too close to the freeway. You can hear the freeway noise pretty much everywhere in the hotel. Um, I would think maybe the rooms that are on the back side, you can't hear it, but I was, I was towards the back on the side of the hotel and I could pretty much hear the freeway all the time. It wasn't super, super loud, but it's loud enough to just kind of keep me on edge all the time. Uh, and then if there were loud trucks or there were loud motorcycles, I could hear those things come by. The other thing, the air conditioning, I, I don't love where this air conditioning is in this room. The air conditioning vent is right there and then the bed is right there. And so the air conditioner just kind of like blows on the bed. And while I do like that the air conditioner stays on all night, like you can keep the fan on all night in the room, which is not often the case in a lot of these um, less expensive Las Vegas hotels, when it turns on, it turns on to like a gale force wind. Uh, and so it's almost like, okay, I need to, I need to wait till the air conditioning compressor turns off before I can go to sleep because it's just, it's too cold and it's blowing too much. So I wish that air conditioner was another part. Um, the breakfast, uh, that's probably a pro that there's free breakfast in the hotel. Um, pretty easy to get to. Uh, the con, it's not an amazing breakfast. I mean, it's a decent breakfast. The breakfast, uh, you know, had eggs, bacon, sausage, three waffle machines, oatmeal. I generally uh, I had kind of the oatmeal and a little bit of eggs. Sometimes I'd grab and go with a banana. So um, fairly basic breakfast. And the other con related to the location, there is nothing really within walking distance of this hotel. You will not be walking anywhere. You should really only consider this hotel if you have a car or you don't mind taking Uber or taxis everywhere. Don't plan on walking. I did walk back from the strip to this hotel one night because I just wanted to see if I could do it and I could. It took 45 minutes or so to walk from the Venetian back to here. I'm a pretty fast walker uh, and it was, it was not a very nice walk. So I would not encourage anybody to attempt that walk unless you're truly adventuresome. Oh, and another pro that I forgot to mention while I was up in the room, free parking. Parking's 100% free. I never had any problem parking in this pretty big parking garage. The room rates here, you can often find them for $100 a night. With taxes, it comes out to be about 115 all in, no resort fees, no parking. So the value here is pretty good, especially with the free breakfast. But the real question is, should you consider staying at this hotel? Well, if what you like is you like a hotel that's kind of on the smaller side, doesn't have a casino, isn't very smoky, you don't mind the fact that you have to drive everywhere or you have to take an Uber because you have a car, then this is probably a good hotel for you. If you want a hotel that you're going to be in the center of the strip, in the center of the action, that you can stumble out to your hotel to a lot of things, then this is not the place. If that's the case, I'd suggest you check out some of my other videos right here about Las Vegas hotels. I've got all of the Las Vegas hotels that I've reviewed right here in this playlist so you can peruse through them. One of my favorites is the Marriott Grand Chateau. It's just like a short block off the strip. That's a pretty good one, quiet, and has kind of all the things that, uh, that Topher and I like in a hotel. All right, well, we won't say goodbye because we're going to see you right here.